a strike. And you lie. You kicked all the food. There's my buddy. I'm fresh out of the shower, and there's that head poking out. Good to see you, friend. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, good morning, my lion-hearted friends. It's a beautiful day in Los Angeles. I see the sun shining through my window blinds and uh, I'm ready to go out and do something memorable today. Unfortunately at first I'm gonna have to uh, give it a whirl driving again. I'm gonna have to uh, ease my way back in because uh, I wanna I gotta get new brakes put on and uh, I wanna get that window repaired and so uh, Carrie's dad's helping me get that stuff done and I think I'm gonna have to drive just a few blocks to get all that stuff done so uh, this will be a good test I appreciate you guys coming along with me and uh, Days with Jordan the Lion. Well, we already said that, so never mind. Let's just start the day, okay? And look at that tail going. That is a guy that wants to go out for a walk, isn't it? You want to go out for a walk? You are a happy boy. Let's do it. All right, let's get going. I got to head out and get my glass fixed. It's a, it's a scorcher out here today, so I guess let's just go get this done. I think I'm going to have to right on the freeway for a few stops so as long as I stay in the same lane I shouldn't have too many problems. Well it turns out it's not quite as bad as I thought. They're only going to charge me 15 bucks to install the glass so I kind of lucked out. I'm so glad that Carrie's dad knows all these shops all over town. He's lived out here since the late 60s so he just has all these different uh, places that can do all this kind of stuff and man, I just totally locked out. 15 bucks is exactly in my wheelhouse. <laughs> you know these guys are good when I don't even have to show them my car. They just looked at the glass I handed them and they knew what kind of car I had. All right, all fixed. Welcome to Battle Dome. This is 100% foolproof. Never in my life have I put this battle mat out and didn't have somebody to come visit me in about 10 seconds. <laughs> you ready to fight? You want to wrestle? This is the side everybody doesn't get to see you. Well, that side I guess now, but the wrestling side of you. Oh yeah, you are, you're, yeah. Yeah, you're brutal. You'd be a great watchdog. You'd be a great watchdog because you're just such a killer, aren't you? You're just going to let me do that? My daily postcard. Wow. Look at that relic. Even with the remote control, you don't see those fat TVs anymore. All right, well, I've been hanging around the house for about the last hour since I got home, uh, waiting to hear from Carrie's dad because he's gonna help me get my brakes replaced today. Hopefully today, maybe tomorrow, looks like. But uh, I haven't heard from him, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and go down to Hollywood Boulevard and do the vlog. And what I wanted to do today was, is, the oldest restaurant in Hollywood. Founded in 1919, originally called Frank's Cafe. 
You've probably seen it in the movie Ed Wood. It's where Ed Wood has his fictitious, well, in, you know, in the, in the movie, has his uh, little conversation with Orson Welles. And uh, this, is, this place has been dined in by everybody in Hollywood. I mean, we're talking Greta Garbo, Charlie Chaplin, Mary Pickford, uh, Rudolph Valentino, Steve McQueen, Elizabeth Taylor. Now it's known as Musso and Franks. Let's go. Now what's cool is that in 1919, when the restaurant opened, they had a French chef named Jean Roux, and he created the menu to which most of the menu is still the same to this day. So you can actually go in and you can order Charlie Chaplin's favorite meal. And what was Charlie Chaplin's favorite meal at Musso and Franks? Roast lamb kidneys, of course. Well, in 1927, Musso and Frank both sold their claims in the restaurant to two Italian immigrants. And those two men actually moved the restaurant right next door. So I'll show you where the restaurant used to be and then where it is now. And the chef, Sean Roux, actually presided over this kitchen for 35 years. Now, what I find pretty cool about this is that not only is this the oldest restaurant in Hollywood, but this was the very first restaurant in Hollywood to ever have a payphone. Now, all these years later, the original Italian immigrants, one of which being the last name Masso, not Musso, but Masso, his granddaughter still run the business to this day. Here it is. Musso and Frank's, the oldest restaurant in Hollywood. Established 1919. And like I said, this was not only the restaurant to the stars, but right here was where the original Frank's Cafe was. Right next door where this cantina is. This was originally Frank's, Musso and Frank's. It was Frank's Cafe, then Musso and Frank's. And then it moved over to here when the new owners took over. And I can't go in and eat because it's their average prices are 30 to 60 bucks, it says online. But um, some great stories about this place is, like I said, everybody from Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, Charlie Chaplin, they were all regulars here. And one of the great stories was that uh, Charlie Chaplin once challenged Douglas Fairbanks to a horse race up and down Hollywood Boulevard, and the uh, loser had to buy dinner. And actually, Charlie Chaplin, they said, won that. They would have raced up and down this street on horses. Can you believe that? Now, in the 30s, Musso and Franks actually opened up what was called the Backroom Bar. And uh, this became like a bar for the elite. All the stars would come and drink there and uh, they would pretty much be left alone from tourists and anyone else that would wander in. But in the 30s, Hollywood had this boom of hiring all these famous literary authors to come to Hollywood and work on screenplays. So at the time, this became a hangout for those authors because um, right across the street was where the Screenwriters Guild was located at the time. And when the guy, the uh, writers would get tired of like the executives breathing down their neck, they would just come over here and write inside this bar. And it also helped that right over here where this place called Star World is, at the time, it was a place called Stanley Rose Books. And so they could go in there and, you know, get some books. <laughs> so what they did was apparently in the 50s, they closed down the backroom bar, the historic backroom bar. But what they did do was they took the actual bar itself and they moved it into what's called the new room here. And uh, some of the literary geniuses that would have uh, drank in that backroom bar, they actually said... At one point, if you stood in the back room bar, you would be standing where every single author you had ever heard of had stood. Now, other than like, you know, Oscar Wilde. But um, F. Scott Fitzgerald would come here and uh, work on his screenplays. John Steinbeck, T.S. Eliot, uh, Dorothy Parker, William Faulkner, uh, Raymond Chandler, um, you name it, they were here. Charles Bukowski later on in life. Um, yeah, the, the names were pretty much endless. And um, so this place has just a, such a great history. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go around the back to the back entrance and I'm gonna see if I can walk in and see where the old, uh, where the old back room bar was. 
and they've pretty much kept this decorated the same, the same menu throughout the years, and uh, it's just one of those slices of Hollywood that you can still enjoy the old-fashioned way. It's Freddy. Apparently the reason the back room closed, the back bar, was because they lost their lease. And so they had to move everything. Now let's see if we can't see where Kurt Vonnegut drank. And that was the old Frank's Cafe before they moved it here. Wow. wow. That's the original, uh, very first telephone in Hollywood, right? 1926. 1926. Wow. Oh man, that's so cool. Yeah. Oh wow. That is neat. Names carved in it and everything. And this is where the new bar is. That's it, that's the original bar. Wow, that is neat. Wow, what history. What history. Wow. I'm just talking, guys, because I don't want the music to uh, be a problem. Wow, amazing. Very cool. The real Musso and Franks. And I believe this is the booth that uh, Johnny Depp was in for the uh, for the uh, Ed Wood and Orson Welles scene, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'm gonna get out of here, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was the original uh, phone booth out in the hallway, and he said that the original back bar was back through here, but of course it's closed, so we can't get to it. But uh, I guess that's where it was. Or perhaps this was the back bar, I don't know. There's a staircase here. And then there's a staircase here. If anybody knows, let me know. I couldn't find anything online. I kind of went outside and looked around, but uh, maybe it was down here where these, uh, says employees only, so I'm not gonna mess with it, but there's the kitchen. Wow, what great history. I can't believe they were so cool about not only letting me walk around and film, but actually pointing out things that I should see. That's so cool. It's not every day that a place would do that, especially a place that's so high class in there. And um, yeah, man, awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed that. You guys see that sign? It says Billy Holiday Hologram Show coming soon. I may have to go check that out. That might be pretty interesting. And there it is in its entirety. So just to the left of it would have been the original Frank's Cafe. Then you had Musso and Frank's. Then you had to have the Stanley Rose Bookshop. Right there where that green awning is, I believe. That was awesome. Just another fantastic day of Hollywood history and helicopters. And a vlog on this guy soon. Is that a rocket? That is definitely a rocket. I stopped and got some bread and peanut butter for a sandwich. And look at that. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, I love it. Well, cookie snatchers. And I love that one too. <laughs> now I believe, if I am not mistaken, that Michael is picking me up tonight to go uh, for our suit fittings for the wedding. I'm gonna have to check with him, but I'm pretty sure that this day is not complete for me yet. <laughs> well, I was indeed correct. Michael and I do have our suit fitting tonight and this ought to be hilarious because when you put Michael in these kind of situations, it's always a blast. All right, we have arrived for the fitting. This ought to be hilarious. I can't tell you what we talked about, but in a few months, I will tell you what we talked about in the car. I was laughing the whole way. I don't mean to sound low class, guys, but this is definitely the first time I've been in an actual suit store to buy a suit. Every time I've bought a suit before, in the recent years, it's been at like a uh, Goodwill, and it almost is like a brand new suit, or, um, I've been on a set and they've just ended up letting me keep it. That's how I've gotten the two suits. So this is definitely a culture class for me to be in here around respectable people. <laughs> well, an interesting turn of events. I'm getting a ride home now from uh, John and he's got to remove a air conditioner from my seat. <laughs> ah, Lionhearts, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. This was a lot of fun for me. I really enjoyed getting to see the inside of Musso and Franks, if you can believe it. 
In the entire time that I've lived in Hollywood, I've never went in there. It's always closed on Mondays, and I had always heard that it was extremely expensive to go in, so I've honestly never been in there. That was my first eyes seeing that place just like it was yours, so we all saw it together, and I think that was pretty awesome. And I had a blast tonight hanging out with my friends at the uh, suit fitting. Michael, John, and I were in a band all the way back in 2001, and we're all still really great friends, and whenever we get together, it's just non-stop laughs, and uh, John is starting a, a an idea for a YouTube channel that I am 100% behind, and I gave him a ton of ideas tonight, so I'm going to be a part of that, and uh, I'll probably be filming um, in my vlogs, part of what we're doing with that, it's going to be great, um, honestly, like, I'd say a lot of the ideas were things that I kind of threw at him and that he loved, so... It'll be um, as much my personality as it is him, uh, but he will, it will. this will be his deal. This will be like his show, him hosting. I'll be in it with him. Some of his other friends will be in it with him, and uh, I think you guys will dig it. Um, it's just so cool to be with those guys tonight and hang out and know that uh, while we're in Sweden, we're going to be in Sweden all together. And uh, I'm getting there early enough that Michael told me tonight that I'm part of the, uh, the crew that is going with him to Germany to get the uh, booze because... In order to have enough alcohol for this uh, this wedding, you have to actually get it um, in a different country and show paperwork showing that you're having a wedding and that's why you're bringing all this in. So we're actually going to be going through Denmark, going through Germany. I'll be vlogging all of that stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's it. Um, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to our trip. I got to go back next week. They're going to they fit us for our suits. I got to see what we're going to be wearing and everything, what we're going to be buying. And um, I got to go back next week once they have them altered, try it on and everything, and um, then we'll be taking them off to Sweden with us, or mail, I don't know how they're going to get there, I don't know what's going on, two of the groomsmen are in Sweden already, and then there's like four of, including Michael, there's four guys here, so, it should be a fun trip, and all of us will be there together, exploring Sweden together, um, so that's it, the end of the vlog, thanks for listening to me talk and ramble on this whole time, and I appreciate you guys watching, and for those of you who choose to support this channel uh, by donating and stuff, thank you so much for buying shirts and Patreon and just watching my videos, commenting, everything. It makes my day to know that people care about what I'm doing and that uh, if I took a day off, you guys would not let me live it down. You, there would definitely be comments saying like, what happened to the vlog? Where is it? I need this vlog. I need to see it. And that makes me feel loved and, and that this channel is needed. And, you know, I got a couple of emails today from people saying, hey, there's like... Um, some really nasty things said on your on your YouTube today. I don't see it. I have all that stuff hidden, blocked. I don't even see it. If they're commenting that stuff, they're watching my videos. I win a hundred times, so I win. Who cares? Don't let it bother you guys. Ignore it. Have a good night. From your old pal Jordan the Lion in Hollywood, California. Good night.